Welcome to a new daily top ask credit video. Today's topic. What is something that you're a fan of but don't want to tell people because you will be grouped in with a really annoying fan base? Removed. On mobile I sometimes get that are you enjoying Reddit? Pop up. I'm torn on how to answer it. It's the equivalent of buying something expensive that you needed and having a pop ask you if you're enjoying capitalism. I'm interested in trains. I don't want to meet anyone else who is. So. You like trains, I like trains as well. Rick and Morty. Love the show but the fan base is obnoxious. They think they're the smartest in the room. So true. It's like yeah the writing is good, but the fans didn't write it they just watched it. I don't get why they are so pretentious about it. Everyone thinks they're a Rick but in reality they're just a Jerry. Admittedly I have not actually watched the show aside from a few online clips, but isn't Rick an asshole an accomplished mad scientist, of course, but an utter asshole nonetheless. Wishing to be like him seems misguided. I really love pro wrestling. Not just WWE, but stuff from Japan and Mexico too. I'm a big nerd about it. Otherwise, I'm a normal professional dude. While I've started to get over it as I've gotten older, I would hate for my clients to know how much time I spend watching punchy ballet. Edit, my new top comment is me admitting that I watch something that I don't want anyone to know I watch. I understand. Some people kinda get it. Others no way. Haven't watched in a solid year or two but I can relate. Doctor Who. I fucky love it but good gracious is that a cringy fandom. I love Doctor Who but the for girls. The Smith girls are bad but the Tenant girls are a whole different level of crazy. Don't get me wrong, I like the Tenth Doctor but damn, those for girls, they are like supernatural level crazy. Doctor Holock shit back in Tumblr days was so fucking cringy. I really enjoy trying different whiskies, notably, bourbons, but I can't say I would enjoy the snobbishness, sophisticated attitudes, and overpricing that comes with it. My so works in the booze industry and I sat in on a whiskey class they did. The facilitator said some famous person drinks forward slash makes this whiskey. I said, you know Matthew M. C. Koahe has an impressive collection. I hear it's all right all right all right. It was a prouder moment in my life, I'm not very witty. It's a whiskey business. For fic writing. It's hard enough when you bring up you write but it is a different level when it's for fic. I literally tell people I write short stories instead of saying for fic. It has the worst reputation, when in reality, there are some truly amazing works out there. Non-judgmental question, what is the appeal of writing for fic as opposed to original short stories? Edit, for God's sake does anyone know how to turn off notifications for replies? This question was answered six hours ago. Rick and Morty. I don't wanna be classified with the people who rioted over Zeshwa Source. Meercraft. I'm a grown ass man but sometimes I just want to relax, build a house out of blocks and go fishing. I'm not giving my exact age, but suffice it to say that the first computer in my family's house was a Commodore VIC-20. I love building houses, villages, and exploring mines. My son likes to say that my style of playing is lame because I don't play on survival with zombies after me. Fellow VIC-20 owner here. I also play in creative. The survival thing boggles my mind. I don't understand why you'd want to trudge around digging and fighting all the time. But that's why they made two modes I suppose. I'll focus on building my home theatre room while they blow up creepers. I will say it's quite annoying to be admiring my newly built living room only to have a duck waddle by. P. Aim. My problem is that I always meet people who have this delusion that their life must be a name or hit I and that if they follow that logic they'd become this popular leader with a harem. Like you just watch the shows, enjoy the merch and don't fucking go to Japan thinking you'd be treated like a god. I can't stand the people who think they are Japanese because they've learned a few Japanese words from watching AIM or the people who act like Japan is some magical wonderland because of AIM. People like that are part of the reason why the AIM community as a whole gets a bad name, even though most AIM fans are decent people. I loved Japan. The food, the history, everything was so amazingly clean. The language is fun, there are tons of museums and historical sites to see. The geography is great, taking the train up to Ha was amazing. I had a crazy experience doing an emergency Airbnb after Sudila shut down the airport. It was an amazing experience. 
didn't go there to do anything aim related. If I were near the Kiblai Museum, I probably would have stopped by, but you have to make a trip. Oh, and we stopped at the Mega Tokyo Pokemo Center to pick up some souvenirs. Hell, even the airport has showers. No joke. If you ever get a layover at Arita, go take a shower, especially since chances are you just spend literally half a day in a metal tube with other metal tube goers. Be the cleanest dude or dudette on the next metal tube you sit in. I guess the point is, there are a lot of reasons to go to Japan. Aim is not even close to the best reason. Take Sasuke and good shoes. I just watch AIM because I enjoy watching animated people beat each other up, I actually never thought of Japan different lie because of it. Same, I assumed it's like North America life being shown in TV shows. Not accurate, and the accurate parts are exeged way out of proportion. I still love Udertail and I think it's a fantastic game. I don't want to be lumped in with the people who never fucking shut up about song. Or the ones trying to kill each other over ships. I just want to enjoy the game in peace. My friend once said, there's more to Udertail than Song and Papyrus. Your friend is correct. Completely agree as a fellow Udertail fan. I also hate all the pressure people put on Toby Fox to make a sequel. That first message he put out after chapter 1 of Delta Rune broke me. He was clearly struggling and buckling under the pressure and I didn't want to be a part of the fandom anymore. Anyone can love a game, and you can share that view you just don't need to shove it down people's throats. Lego. I avidly built Lego sets up until I was about 15 sixteenths, then I got a girlfriend. I thought she would think I was lame being a sophomore in high school who still played with Lego. I put my sets away and stopped building, but deep down I still really wanted to build. I've gotten back into it now and have gotten my fiancé into it as well, but I still feel some mild embarrassment going into the Lego store or Target and walking out with a set. Edit, I got on to look for some HDMI recommendations and was shocked to see over 300 replies to this comment. Thanks everyone for the kind words and reassurances. I suppose I misinterpreted the question a bit. I'm not embarrassed by the LEGO fan base, but, like I said, just embarrassed to admit that I enjoy them and buy. I try to keep in mind that I shouldn't be embarrassed, but I still have that little voice in the back of my head that feels like I'm too old for it. I get over it though and I enjoy the shit out of building with my fiancé and displaying our work. Holy shit. I totally have the money now to walk into Target and buy a set. It's been so automatic not to buy Legos for so long. Thanks op. I know what I'm doing tomorrow. Don't be embarrassed. I'm super into Lego and I'm 32. I tell everyone who asks what my hobbies are. I've never gotten shit for it. In fact some people have given me old sets their kids or whoever didn't want. Ha. Huh. You're lame. J forward slash K. I'm 40 and I'm staring at my Lego Millennium Falcon, Tati 4, and Saturn V sets. All purchased and built within the last three years. I have no children. Pop punk forward slash emoid a lot of people seem to be annoyed by them. I love the music but unfortunately it seems like almost every band has been involved with sexual allegations and such. Edit, I don't deserve all this karma. Thanks. Can you give examples? I like the used, TBS, MCR, FOB, Say Anything, Paramo, brand new and I only know of the lacy allegations. Yes. I think especially the MCR stands on Twitter, the only thing they do is talk about ships and harass the band members and their families. I love the band and the whole pop punk forward slash emo genre, but these people worship celebrities too much, it's like it's not even about the music anymore. Astonished nobody said Star Wars yet. You can put two Star Wars fans in the same room and they'll still be off at each other about which films are worst. I'm not innocent of it, but it can get so uncivilized. Edit, I hope you kids arguing about Star Wars in the comments know how ironic that is. Also since you asked, my favorite is Empire. They drove the guy who voiced Jar Jar to the brink of suicide. If you've not seen it already, I strongly recommend you look out the video of Ahmed Best talking about taking his son to the bridge where he attempted suicide. It's not terribly old. Very impactful, and certainly a stark reminder that not enjoying a film is no excuse to bully a person. E colon source. And the poor dude who played Aki in Phantom Menace quit acting and really seems miserable any time Star Wars is brought up. 
I'll say that I hate Rise of Skywalker very passionately and enjoy heated discussions about it and the Disney era of Star Wars in general. But I can at least see that nothing is worth making another human feel like garbage because of a harmless opinion or their involvement in a subpar piece of media. Wine, but I hate the wine mommy culture. Yes, I have kids but that has literally nothing to do with why I love wine so much. Seriously, why is there a culture around what basically amounts to moms being so sick of their kids that they need to be drunk to handle it? Edit, to be clear I'm not talking about a couple evening drinks to relax after a hard day. I know parenting is hard, and everyone needs breaks. There's nothing wrong with that, in moderation. What I'm talking about is drinking a whole bottle or more a night, and the normalizing of alcoholism by joking about how mommy needs her juice and having comically large wine glasses that say mommy fuel on them. Not trying to be sexist either, I'd say the same thing about a father who needs alcohol to handle dealing with his kids. There are other ways alcoholism is normalized too, but this is one of the biggest. And no, I don't have kids, because I know it's extremely taxing and I'd probably become an alcoholic myself and be a horrible parent, so I choose not to have that life. I'm a mom, I drink wine or beer occasionally in front of my kid, usually with a meal or watching a sports game on TV, sure I occasionally need a small break from being a mom and go out with my friends for a drink. But the moms who try to pull out wine at playgroup at 10am because a mayo mommy needs some mommy juice. Yeah, no thanks. <laughs>